What is the process to make a video? We find an interesting topic to shoot, we spend some time planning, and then we go out and film. This is the fun part, playing with all the cameras, the drones, the gimbals, but then comes the bottleneck for a lot of creators, putting it all together. Editing isn't always the most glamorous part of the process, but the majority of time, it becomes the longest and the most challenging. So how do you put all the pieces together and how can you get through this process faster so that you could start working on your next video? So I just got back from filming an interesting story up in LA. It's about this weird history around these ruins that are only a stone's throw away from one of the wealthy parts of the city. And filming this entire video was a lot of fun. It was great to go out there and explore and do some hiking and be able to just get immersed in the story and really figure out what to shoot. But now comes the harder part, at least, I think it's the harder part, and that is editing and putting all the pieces together. So in this video, I wanna talk you through my process of how I sit down and approach one of these edits and get them done so fast. And this is also the same process that I use for all of my videos here on my main channel. Let me just give you a quick outline of what I'm gonna go over in this video. So first we'll have a discussion about branding and then we'll get into my editing flow. We'll talk about motion graphics and templates. And then also we'll talk about customizing those templates. These are all the different things that I do to speed up my workflow so that I don't spend so much time editing and so that I can spend more time in actually shooting because that's the part of the process that I personally really enjoy. But before we get into the video, I just wanna say a special thanks to Motion VFX for sponsoring this video. Motion VFX is a leader in producing plugins for Final Cut Pro, DaVinci Resolve, and Premiere Pro. They also produce a bunch of stock elements that you can use in any editing software. And I personally have been using Motion VFX for a few years and they're the plugins that I use for all of my videos both here on this channel and also all the videos that I'm making over on my second channel. Essentially what they do is build out motion graphics that you can use in your edits and it will add a completely new element and a professional look to all of your edits. And the best thing about all of these plugins is that you can completely customize them to fit your brand. And essentially you could change everything about these graphics to fit exactly what you need. Personally, I use Final Cut for all of my editing and these plugins integrate seamlessly within my workflow. They show up in the generators tab and you could just drag and drop them right onto your timeline. And then from there, it's just a few changes in the inspector window and you're ready to move on and continue with your editing. Motion VFX has a ton of different styles of graphics, whether it's titles, logos, icons, lower thirds, basically everything you need to add some motion on screen and finish your edit. So if you wanna see what motion graphics or animations or stock elements you can add to your videos, make sure you head down in the description to where I've included a link to Motion VFX. And also I'll include some links down in the description to my favorite plugins that I use on most of my videos. So let's dig into some different things you need to think about when you're editing your videos. So the first thing I wanna have a discussion on is branding and your style. Now, when it comes to making videos, you wanna have a brand and your brand is gonna dictate how everything looks when it comes to graphics or text or basically just how anything appears on screen. And so one thing that I've done personally for this channel here is I've come up with an entire brand guideline and this has all of my colors that I use, it has all the fonts, it shows how I actually use fonts. And so this is something that I've thought through and figured out, well, I like these elements looking this way when I make my videos. And by making these decisions and setting up all of this on the front end, it makes it so that when it comes time to actually do my editing, I know exactly how I'm going to add graphics and fonts and text and everything on screen so that I don't have to think about it and I don't have to try and test things. And also when you come up with your brand guideline, it's gonna help you as a solo creator, but also when you start working with a team. If you have an editor, well, you just hand them the brand guideline and they have a starting point, a jumping off point where they could start building your videos and you don't actually have to go through everything from scratch and sh tell them exactly what you need to do. This is a guide that you'll always have. And so thinking through your brand and coming up with your own guide is gonna help create a visual style. And so when someone's watching your videos, it feels like there's some consistency from video to video. So the next thing we need to talk about is the editing process. And my editing process is fairly simple. It's three steps. And I've really thought through my process and this is the way that I'm able to get through videos faster. 
Step one is organization, step two is my first cut, and step three is polishing and my final cut. And I know that seems kind of simplified, but make sure that I organize everything before I get into the first cut, and I make sure I get my entire first cut done before I actually go through and start adding things like motion graphics and everything else that I do to polish up my videos. And so let's talk about organization. So here is just my projects folder, and this is on my computer. I have a four terabyte hard drive on my laptop, and that allows me to edit off of the hard drive in this laptop without plugging in an external hard drive. And it's an easier flow for me, especially when I'm traveling so I don't have something hanging out. Now here in my office, back there, I have a 98 terabyte hard drive which has all of my older projects. So it's everything that's already finished and just things that I need to access when I'm digging into my archive. So here's my projects folder and everything is broken down into date, project number, and then a title. So for example, the giant rock video that I did, it was April, 2022, and that project number is 720. And the reason I go by project numbers is because I have a Notion set up. And Notion is basically a database builder. So in my Notion, I have a page that's all for project 720, the giant rock. And so here's a glimpse of my database. This is my finished database. And you can see I have my video numbers organized and then a title, the status, and the channel that it's on. And I did this because now I have two channels and instead of making two databases, I'm just using one and organizing it and then I could go through and sort it later. And so when you see down here at 720, I have the giant rock story. I can open that as a page and I have a bunch of different information that I can fill out here linked to this video, but also I have the whole script and basically anything else that I might have attached to this giant rock story. So if I had more research and articles and different things that I'm working on, I'm gonna put everything into my Notion so that if I ever need to go back to a video or find something, everything is easily findable in a database. The key when it comes to making things faster is making everything accessible and in a system that is easier to find what you need. So all of my videos have a project number associated with them and then they're all organized by date and so I could easily have a reference of year and month while also using project numbers to have all of the other data in my Notion. And if you want me to do a bigger breakdown of how I built out my databases in Notion, I'd love for you to let me know down in the comments. And this is something that I could do a video on because I have everything in my Notion that basically runs my entire business. All right, so let's go back to the projects folder. Let's open up my giant rock folder. And you see that I have it organized into a few categories. I have my Final Cut profile. I have a thumbnail folder, a media folder and exports. So it's super simple. And if there's any other folders that I need, I'll just add them right in here. Now I don't put numbers for these folders like some other creators do because it's really easy to see what I have here. It's only a few folders. But when you go into media, for example, you'll see that I have a bunch of different folders and I label things based on cameras or based on the types of footage that it is. So you'll see I have a roll, which for this video, I did a behind the scenes. And so that a roll is just me talking on camera here in my office. I also have A7S III. That was footage from when I was on location using the A7S III. I have my Action 2. I have a Phonic, which is audio processing that I do online. And this is where I keep the finished file. I have Case B-Roll. So this is just footage of the product that I was talking about in my behind the scenes. I have Mini 2 drone footage. I have photography and I have some voiceover. So when it comes to organization, this is all I need to be able to find the footage and audio that I'm using to make this edit. You could change up your folder structure however you like, but you just need a quick reference to know where everything is so that when you get into the editing software, you could easily bring it all in and then do some more organization. And the next step in my organization process is bringing this all into Final Cut. And for those of you who are Final Cut users, let me just show you a breakdown of how I do this. So for this giant rock video, I had a behind the scenes, which was here on this main channel. And then I had my story video, which was on my second channel. And so when you open this up, you'll see that I just have all the same keywords that are the folders that I made in my organization. Then this is because I could just easily drag all those folders into Final Cut, makes all the keywords, and then I can start editing. I just set everything up that makes sense for what I need to be able to find the footage that I'm looking for. So if you need more folders and more organization, we'll add more folders and move your footage into more places. But you just need to be able to find everything. And this comes down to what's easier for you to find different elements. And so the next step of the process for me is getting into the first cut. And the first cut is something that I think is super important and I try to get done as fast as possible. And the reason for this is if you're tinkering with your footage too much, 
you're gonna just get sucked in the loop of trying to figure out what to do without actually seeing any progress. And progress is huge to get yourself to keep moving forward and finish a project. So what I found in my years of editing is that I try to just get a first cut done as fast as possible. And so I'll take my script or my outline for whatever video I'm making, and I'll just follow that and start adding all the elements in. Yeah, I'll have creative ideas as I'm going through this, and I might change some things here and there, but the idea is to get a cut from beginning to end so I could see the entire story or the entire tutorial laid out in one finished timeline. And while I'm doing this first cut, I'm also going through all of my footage and seeing everything that I have. So I'm scrubbing through all of my B-roll, I'm looking at what kind of shots I got when I was out filming, and I'm just kind of seeing everything so that I have a general idea of what is in all of this footage. I might not add all of it right away, but I just can see where everything is and what I shot and what I have to work with. And then the next step is polishing and finishing. And once you have a cut from beginning to end, it's gonna be a lot easier to take different sections and move them around or add new sections or add B-roll or add different elements that's gonna help enhance your story. But having that first cut for me is the most essential. And then it allows me to just be creative and then I could just start playing around. So this gets into my next section, which is about motion graphics and how they can speed up your workflow. So as I said earlier in the sponsored segment, Motion VFX is what I use for most of my motion graphics. And the reason I use plugins is because it speeds up my workflow. Personally, I'm not a full-time editor and I don't need to learn how to build out all the different graphics from scratch. I've found that plugins are the easiest way to speed up your workflow, especially if you're someone who wears a lot of different hats. So if you're shooting, if you're writing, if you're researching, if you're editing, if you're doing all the uploading, the whole process, well, you're gonna wanna make things easier for yourself and motion graphics really make things easier. And so for here on this channel, I have a bunch of just animations and graphics that I go back to again and again. And I also do things like punch ins because having a graphic where I could just lay it on top and then it automatically zooms makes it so I don't have to keyframe anything. And having all of these elements in plugin form makes it a lot easier to get through my edit faster. And this is also why I use LUTs for a lot of my color grading because I don't wanna go through and color grade every video clip. I shoot a lot of my footage when I'm outdoors in log. And so if I was to go through and edit every shot, it would take a lot of time. So I use an adjustment layer and then I add LUTs to everything that I do. So having plugins and motion graphics is gonna speed up your workflow. And this brings me to my next thing, which is templates. So I like to build all my graphics out and then template them so that I don't have to rebuild them over and over. And I actually have a Final Cut file that I use called template, which just has all of these built out already and on a timeline. And I could duplicate this Final Cut file so that when I actually get into editing, I already have a timeline with all of these graphics that I typically use so that I could just copy and paste them and I'm not rebuilding graphics even though a lot of these are plugins, you still have to do some editing and tweaking to make them your own and fit your brand. Now you could take this a step further and start customizing your own graphics. So if you're a Final Cut user, you could actually open all of these motion graphics and text elements and everything else in Apple Motion. And you can start tweaking all the elements and build your own graphics from these graphics. And sometimes it might just be like changing colors or changing fonts so that when you bring it back into Final Cut, everything's already customized and you don't have to have that template timeline like I was saying earlier. Now for me, I don't use Motion that often and it's not a tool that I want to learn right now. So I use my templating method, however, one thing that I've done is I start taking all the plugins that I use consistently and I put them in a separate folder. So if you're using Final Cut and you go to your generators tab, you'll see that all your plugins will pop up here. So MTuber or MTravel or MTutorial, these are different plugins that I use from Motion VFX. And when I go into these, there's a lot of different elements and I don't necessarily use all of these elements. But one thing you can do in Final Cut is right click, reveal in Finder, and then what I do is I go back to my main folder where it shows titles and I'll create a new folder here labeled Jevin's Favorites. And what I could do is find the plugins that I like to use over and over, copy that folder and add it in my Jevin's Favorites. Now when I go back to Final Cut, you'll see that there's a new title here that's labeled Jevin's Favorites and one of the arrows that I use is now in there. And so what you could do is find all your favorite elements from the different plugin packs 
and then make one folder with all the elements in there so that you're not sorting through a bunch of random stuff to find exactly what you use for your brand. It's just another way that I've sped up my workflow so that I have everything easily accessible in one folder and I could find exactly what I need. Process is pretty simple when you take a step back and look at it. You wanna make sure that you have everything organized on the front end, you have all your templates built out and you know your brand, and then edit your first cut as fast as you can. And then comes the fun creative part where you get to polish and really play around with your videos and make them your own. Now make sure you head down the description and check out Motion VFX and find the plugins that will work for you. But next, make sure you check out this video right here, which goes through my entire process of how I go from script to actually filming a video. I'll see you on that one.